What's up, Gamecock fans and college football fans? Speaking to my Gamecock friends today. That's right. I said friends, not subscribers. Also, anyone who watches the video, appreciate you guys. Please subscribe. Become a friend if you're not already subscribed. Anyway, I wanted to talk a little bit about South Carolina upcoming scrimmage game this Saturday. We've been seeing some player interviews. There's been some questions asked. Uh, about the coaching staff, about some of the players, how the wide receiver room's been doing, how the offensive line's doing. Um, so we've kind of heard from the coaches too over the weekend. Uh, their media day was uh, last week before they began practice. They've been through four practices. Rocket Sanders talked, um, was kind of asked about the running back room. And uh, Rocket just kind of explained, you know, when he was young, Going into Arkansas, of course, he said he was recruited by Justin Stepp. Justin Stepp actually left before he got to camp campus, and it kind of disappointed him. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, he said when he first got to college football, he didn't know he was going to be a running back, right? Um, he, was a, he was a wide receiver in high school. Uh, then after he got at Arkansas, they – Point blank asked him. He said he asked uh, Sam Pittman, where do you want me today? Sam Pittman told him to go over, get in the running back, huddle, run the football, and from there we know where Rocket's been as a running back. So it was good to see him. I was, I was kind of worried that he was a ghost and didn't exist because up until these couple of interviews here the last few days with fall practice starting, um, he was a man that didn't say a lot. Didn't see a lot, didn't hear a lot of news coming out about him. Not a social media guy. Uh, found out the other day through one of his interviews that he is a father. Um, great for Rocket Sanders. Uh, nothing wrong with being a, a dad uh, and still, you know, being a dad sometimes, especially if a young child is kind of tough. Being away from your family is really tough. But doing what you need to do to take care of your family in college football shows that Rocket Sanders is an adult. He's a grown man. Um, and the main thing he talked about during his interview was helping the other guys, not so much about Rocket Sanders. He didn't really seem to want to talk about himself very much. He talked about his shoulder was feeling better. He was a little bit nervous about taking hits when he first started uh, practice, but he's okay now. Uh, he's ready to go. He says he's ready to go, lost some weight, was working out, getting up at 5 in the morning, uh, overdoing workouts at 5.30 in the morning. Felt great to kind of get that injury healed up and get back with the guys and get some good uh, camaraderie going. Uh, a lot we heard about it, a lot of wide receivers and stuff today. Gage Larberdane is going to play with a chip on his shoulder because people keep bringing up the size of a lot of South Carolina's wide receivers. I think these guys are starting to get really tired of hearing about their size. And it's like they say, hey, we're small. We got speed. Everybody's a four, three, four, four guy. Good luck. To any other team, your defensive backs keeping up with them. I think they're going to play with a little bit of attitude. Uh, a lot about uh, D Camp, the new wide receiver from Nevada, and his size and what he brings uh, to the table. They talked to the North Sellers, and he talked about D Camp, big target, um, not as quick and as fast, but he says it's not that much of an adjustment for him to throw the ball to the bigger receivers like Harbor and D Camp than the, than the smaller guys, right? And a lot of people want to be on special teams. That's the one thing I heard out of quite a few of the wide receivers in their interviews. Uh, they want to be on punt return. They want to catch the ball. They want to be active in helping the team improve and get better. Uh, Ja'Kai Moore talked about the offensive line and helping the younger guys. He's practiced at three different positions uh, since uh, camp started. These guys are willing to do whatever it takes to win, right? And uh, that was one of the things Ja'Kai Moore was talking about, hanging out, staying during the month of May when they could have gone home. Rocket Sanders brought up that same thing about being around in May doing his rehab instead of, you know, going home or doing whatever these guys got to do when they were, they were supposed to be off. But they were in putting in the work. Uh, a lot of stuff was brought out about all the extra things that the team did during the summertime to try to get everybody together. Um, and build a team, right? Uh, love your brother. Take care of your brother. Ja'Kai Moore spoke highly of loving Big Tree and Trayvon Ball. They call him Trey. Uh, 
uh, and wanting to teach them and be around them and they have fun and they cut up and they laugh. I guess Big Tree has a sense of humor. And you could kind of see he was a bubbly kid in his interview. This past weekend, I watched the uh, when they talked to him and he looks like one of them big boys you just want to give up, run up and give him a hug, right? He just likes to laugh and have fun. So I can see that with Big Tree. Um, and it's good that the guys can laugh and cut up because it's about to get even more difficult. One of the things they talked about is adjusting to the heat. They asked uh, Gage Larvardane that, and he talked about, you know, being from Louisiana, it was kind of used to the heat when he was Louisiana, but then going up and playing for Miami of Ohio, it was a little bit cooler up there. So adjusting back to the heat at South Carolina, uh, you know, Dre, they call him, uh, Jacobs, the new wide receiver from Florida State, kind of talked about the heat too. But I know that kid had to be in the heat because I live in Florida and I was just in Tallahassee and it's hot up there. So I'm sure last year fall camp was pretty hot. They asked him why he decided to hit the transfer portal. Instead, he didn't really care for the, the offense um, that Florida State was going to run or ran. Uh, he looked at uh, Dow Logan's offense, loved what it was and decided he wanted to be at South Carolina. Say he's really doing good. He's one of those names that keeps popping up so far through the practices we've talked about and how much he's grown and learned since being on campus because he was a late at him and D-Camp, the other wide receiver, the 6'4 kid, they just came in in June. They weren't around for spring games. So those are some guys we haven't really seen on the field other than the little bit of practice clips we get to see. Um, so excited to see to see those guys excited for those guys right they really sound like in their interviews they're ready to get the season started and play for the university of south carolina they're happy and that's what we want from our players right i know there's been a lot of talk lately about recruiting losing some recruits some guys that want to go somewhere else. look if they don't want to be here you you wish them well you let them go um the 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 twitter things back and forth with parents or recruits or we rec that that's just silliness there's no need for it there's no call for it um like i told everyone in my video last week look if a kid doesn't want to come here he doesn't choose south carolina or he transfers out of south carolina after a year sometimes transfers they go somewhere else to play right we saw a lot of kids transfer out of South Carolina last year to go to smaller schools so they get playing time and they can play. And with the transfer rules, they can always transfer back to a bigger school if that's what's supposed to be in their future. Um, so I, look, it is what it is right now. Recruiting is where it is. You work on it during the season, you will have guys show up at football games. Um, it's not over until they sign somewhere else, right? So you have till December, early signing period, to add recruits, flip recruits. Uh, a lot of things have been talked about, about maybe some of the guys we did miss on. They may end up flipping back to South Carolina. We'll see how that works out, right? I don't know. I, it's hard to say. You're, you're talking about kids that are 16, 17 years old. Uh, and somebody, you know what I'm saying? They still have their senior season of football left to go. So I don't, I'm not getting too worked up about the recruiting right now. Uh, Beamer's had a good mix of recruiting plus bringing in transfers uh, in his last couple years. So, you know, if you miss on recruiting, you try to get some guys out of transfers. A lot of the guys that are transferred in are a lot of the names we're hearing out of camp. Um, it's going to be really good. The two receivers we I just talked about, uh, linebackers, you, you built some depth through the transfer portal. Uh, with Bengali and Knight, um, you built some depth on defensive end, uh, some interior defensive guy. You built some depth on offensive line. Um, you built, I mean, you pretty much brought in some guys, no matter where you look on the field, whether it's the defensive backs with Gerald Kilgore coming in. <clears throat> so I, I just think you build depth. You also, some of these guys are really young, right? Juwan Howell was just a freshman last year. Uh, Jacobs, uh, Dre, I guess that's what they call him, the wide receiver. He's a, he was a redshirt freshman last year at Florida State. Um, 
you just looked through the room. You didn't just bring in transfers, but you brought in guys that's going to be here for a while, right? There, it's not like a one and done situation. It's guys that will be here for three to four years and develop through the system also. So it's almost just like getting a high school recruit. Um, you know, when you get to older guys, uh, it's probably due to maybe you're really lacking in one spot um, that you really need to bring in experience and guys that have been on the field. Uh, like the, the Knight and uh, Kamara, the two linebackers, those guys have playing experience. They've played in games, you know. And like I told someone the other day, both those linebackers have been clocked at 22 miles per hour. That is fast for some big linebackers. I mean, I can't outrun them, I promise you. And I'm smaller than they are, but I'm also old. I can't outrun too many people. My days of running are about over with unless there's a... Yeah, no, there's no bears chasing me. But anyway, just wanted to bring a little update on South Carolina. Uh, I, how camp's going. Anxious to see how the scrimmage goes this weekend. Wish I could make it to Columbia and watch it. But I won't be able to make it up there. Uh, just too much to do at work. But we'll hear a lot about what happens in the scrimmage game. And uh, like I said, there was some talk about coaching and stuff too. Some questions asked about what Mike Shula has done with the running back. I meant the wide quarterbacks, the offense kind of helped out everywhere. Uh, one thing Lenore talked about is one thing they've really showed him how to do is protect himself if he does take off with the ball. If it's a one-on-one, -on -one, try to run through him. If it's more than one guy, get down and protect yourself. But anyway, I'm going to get out of here for today. Like I said, I appreciate all you guys for following along. My family, my friends. Uh, right now, YouTube still calls y'all subscribers, but I'm not. You're my family. You're my friends. Appreciate all y'all. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up on your way out of the video. YouTube loves those things, and it helps me out tremendously. Appreciate you all. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Peace.